this. The wisdom talk today is so. Okay, again. Let's see. The wisdom talk today, we still in the series of the numerical teachings of the Buddha. What's the topic? Topic is pretty interesting. And uh, okay, the topic today, you see, well, the Buddha. And the topic is mean the three ways in which the Buddha taught. You may have a question, what is the three way? What is the way? What is the thing that Buddha taught to his follower? So the main idea uh, of this topic is we're going to talk about what ways that the Buddha used to teach his Dhamma to his followers. So because the Buddha, he, he had a lot of followers, all the Buddhism come from uh, come from all every class of society and they're educated well educated poor and rich they are all the Buddha's follower so to teach them to understand the truth of life the Buddha he couldn't use the same way a same method because he has to find some appropriate Dhamma in each time to teach with each group of people so this topic I will share how he excellent in using his Dharma to use appro appropriate Dharma to teach his follower yes. I will share it today okay all of this Dharma I got it from Tripitaka, which is the Bali collections of Buddhists, yeah, this, it consists of 45 books. It is it's a lot, right? So, but because this is a lot of the Dharma in Tripitaka, in 100 years ago, one of uh, Thai, uh, Thailand's head of Sangha, his name is, okay, his name, this is him. His name was Somdet Pra Maha Samana Chao Krom Prayawa Shirayan Valorot. He collected all the Dhamma from Tipitaka and put it in order in the numerical teaching orders from start from chapter of two, three, four, five that I explained it in the last uh, the the last Delmai shower. So now we are still in the chapter of three because the three way in the chapter of three he collect all the Dhamma and put in numerical orders to be the numerical teachings of Buddha or uh, sometimes the book we call Nova Kowat this is a, the Dhamma for the new monk and layman standard text standard text for the Dhamma student so so let's go to our topic three way. The first way, what is the first way, the first method, okay, that the Buddha taught, used to touch Dhamma to people. The first one is the Buddha taught Dhamma that proper to his audience. Like I said, because of his followers come from every classes of society, poor, merchant, the king, um, royal family, from come from monks and from educated person, rich man, poor man, every class of society. So he has to use the proper Dhamma to teach each group of people. He cannot use the same Dhamma at the same time to teach every class of people. So it because it's impossible because the background of each person was not the same. So he used the proper Dhamma to his audience, like for example, example here. Yeah, this is a picture when he teach, teach the, his followers, this is consists of monks and laymen that show that, oh, 
he has a lot of followers from every classes of society in ancient Indian era. Then this is the first of monks, first five monks of uh, Buddhism. When he got enlightened, and he want he know that uh, this is a, the way, the right way to purify the mind, got enlightenment. So when he reached, he got enlightened. He think about anybody who, who he can teach, he can share this his knowledge. So this is the first uh, five monk. There, there were the Buddha's followers. We call Panchawaki. The Buddha taught this group first until they got um, the state of Arahant and then get enlightened. This is his close followers. And this is for example, for example, I show the, how he used the appropriate Dharma on, in each time to each person. This picture he come, he met with because the 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 white dress guy, he his name was Satchanikron. He was the hermit and he was the greatest debater of the of the era. In that time, no one can win over him because he felt that he had the best reason in anything. He know everything in the world, and he believed that his body is belong to him. It will stay with him for a long long time but the buddha he used the best analogy to explain to him that everything in the world is impermanent impermanent even your body at last after debation and the satanikron he defeat he accept that the buddha is greater than him and another one, another event. Okay, uh, this is called the the three hermits that you see in the small pictures. He, uh, he they are Shadin Shadin uh, Shadin brothers at uh, the brat. They were um, the uh, monks of another relig religions. They w they believe. They were worshipped to what they believe with by using fire. Fire, the light of fire to worship to their god, their anything. They believe the they believe in fire. But the Buddha he used his the um his spiritual power to cut to uh no to diminish fire and try use analogy to teach all these three brothers to show that fire is not the pathway to get enlightenment or to purify the mind. Actually fire is also means right? greed, um, lust and delusion or the poison in your body. The truth of life by knowing, realizing everything is, is impermanent. This is the truth of life. So, at last, at last, the three brothers, they accept that the Buddha was the greater than them, and they decided to ordain as a Buddhist monk. This is just some example in the Buddha time that show he used the proper dhammas to teach his audience in each event. Yes. Like, okay, compare to the present day, if you are a teacher, you are a teacher and you have to teach a lot of people from many, many ages, do you, can you teach the same thing in the same way to all of them? No, if you have to teach the children, you have to know about the nature of the child and you have to adapt your teaching way to match with the children. But if you have chance to go to the, the United University to teach the university student, so you can give 
more knowledge, intense knowledge to the university student, right? Because they can accept, they know they have the background to show you can use another way from teaching with teaching to students. This is for example. The second way, the second method, okay, the Buddha taught with reason that audience can contemplate. So the things he taught is not reasonable. Oh, no, sorry, is reasonable. Is you can prove it by yourself. He taught in logical way. Okay, so sorry. The next slide. For example, what did he teach? What did he teach? The science, right? You accept that law of karma is a science. Law is a science of cause and effect. Because you you get in what you have done in the past and what you do right now, it will affect you in the future. The law of karma is it um one one of his dharma that shows that explain about cause and reason uh, cause and effect or another one another example the four noble truth the ideas of four noble truth is teach you to realize about suffering and the suffering did not happen by itself it has a reason cause like cause of suffering and then in this four noble truth also explain, also show the way to get rid of suffering. This is called the S4 Noble Path, or in Bali we call Makmiyong Path. So we show cause and reason, cause of suffering and suffering, and the way to get rid of suffering. The last one, last one, last point. Last method, he taught, the Buddha, he taught in the way that was wondrous that others could gain benefits of practicing. So he, he has a, a lot of skill. He uses a high skill in teaching every classes of Buddhists. And, be, and what he teach, the way he teach, the audience could gain, could realize and understand what he teach and come and bring it to practice easily easy to understand buddha style okay the buddha style of teaching consists of what san santanasana okay tea by the el elucidation and verification you can clear everything is clear yeah, you can see, you can understand. Uh, Samatthapana, incitement to take upon oneself you know, it, and make um, audience to uh, be inspirations towards the goal. The audience would, in, would be inspired toward the goal of the Dhamma. It means easy to, to follow and practice. Samutthesana, urging, encouragement, animation. So I mean, what he teach is filling with in enthusiasm that encourage you to follow, encourage you to see, to follow his way of practice, uh, to follow the Dhamma, to be the good man, to purify your mind. The last one, sam, Sampa Hangsana, the gladdening exhilaration, it is a teaching that feeling with delight and joy. Not that hard, not the hard to listen, hard to understand, but delight and joy. Every audience, when we when they listen to the Dhamma from the Buddha, they feel joy to listen, joy to learn, happy to learn, and happy to follow him. This is the point of the three ways in which the Buddha taught to his followers. Thank you very much. I would like to turn microphone to uh, our moderator, Ruba. Thank you very much.